welcome to another episode of The Giants Guys. The guys this week interview former Giants tight end and Super Bowl winner, Kevin Boss. Brown out, brown out. Woo! What's up, people? Guess what? Yep, it's another episode of The Giants Guys. You know Spiro, Mr. Glass Half Full. And tonight we've got Jeff, Fresh, Eli, uh, Michael Stewart. They're all off today. It's because I'm hanging out with the one, the only, Super Bowl winning tight end in the makings like three weeks now we've been trying to put this together kevin boss how are you my friend i'm good my bad guys this is taking so long but i appreciate you sticking with me i've i've been excited to get on here and um yeah i i appreciate you guys it's giving me another chance no 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 (laughs) No need to apologize man yeah it's all good so we had chase blackburn on like i don't know like two months ago and he's like craig I'm really sorry. He's like, I would never do that to you. I'm like, it's fine. He's like, I'm driving back from Carolina from OTAs. I got a golf outing. I've got, um, what did he say? He had a foundation, right? Spear, we had like a yeah, foundation. baseball game he was at. Yeah. <laughs> so he's got his kids at the baseball game. And he's like, I ran out for a couple of innings. They're inside with the wife. And we stood, he stood in the park a lot and talked football with us for like 45 minutes. It, we, had such, we had such a blast. And uh, so awesome. I get it. I get it, man. I totally get it. That's so cool. No, it's, uh, you always feel, I, it's funny because everyone always says like, I remember when I was playing, everybody would always be like, Hey, look, I know you're busy. And, but like, and, and looking back, I'm like, I wasn't busy. Like <laughs> this, now, now I'm busy. Like now, yeah. now having four kids and running a business, like that's busy. But like, it's funny, like there's this misconception that like when you're playing, like you're super busy and it's like, not really. I mean, like, <laughs> especially if you don't, if you don't have kids, I feel like life's not busy until you right. have kids, you know? Sure. Oh, no. Like, so Spiro's got young kids. Mine are 17 and 13. But, like, you know, I coach basketball. I coach flag football. I coach lacrosse. And, like, yeah, I do there's it all. no time. There's no time no, for yeah. anything. Yeah, I'm not ready for anybody else to coach my kids yet either. I, I, might, <laughs> I mean, my wife, my wife thinks I'm a control freak, uh, which, <laughs> which is probably accurate. Um, you know what happens? But yeah, I'm coaching. I'm coaching four teams right now between you know. Let's go. Two Let's soccer go. teams, two flag football teams, and get those uh, fundamentals in there, man. That you, right? You, yeah, they need you. <laughs> exactly. You gotta. Well, you gotta learn it right the first way. As a, exactly. as, a, as the older statesman in the room, I'll tell you, it's you know, and I've also I played college ball on a D three level, and I do know that like you'll watch other parents coach your kid and you're like, Oh no, you know, (laughs) it happens all the time and you try not to take over, but you're like, no, no, that's not how you do it. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, I'm not ready to watch from the sidelines quite yet. (laughs) No, that's cool. That's very cool. Well, I'm going to ask you a couple softball questions first, right? The the fun ones, right? So, and I wrote this down. So I remember, so I don't, we're talking about time management here. So that's kind of a good segue. So yeah. you're a double sports star in, in, in high school, right? And you, college. Yeah. Yeah, I, well, I'm, that's where I'm kind of going. <laughs> you commit to Western Oregon. There's a ton of great football on the West Coast. So there's a, a two-part question. One is, why Western Oregon? And how the hell did you play two sports in college? Like, it almost <laughs> seems like impossible because of how demanding D1 sports are. So why Western yeah. Oregon? And how the hell did you do it? Yeah, um, Western Oregon, I mean, I guess it's a two-part uh, answer. Um, I wasn't really heavily recruited out of high school. I, I just, I, we didn't pass the ball a lot. I was, I hadn't really developed. I mean, I was, I was tall, but I was, I was rail thin. You know, I was six, I was probably six, seven. I think I was like six, wow. seven by my junior year of high school. Amazing. But senior year, I probably graduated at like 190. Um, so I was, I was very skinny. It's not like I was this highly recruited, highly touted, you know, very developed, you know, grown man as in high school. I did, I mean, I wasn't a grown man until gosh, I mean, I was a late developer. Like it wasn't until late in college that I felt like I finally like was fully developed, you know, like, um, and so, yeah, there wasn't a lot of like teams knocking on my door. A lot of colleges that were like, yeah, we want you know, this tall skinny kid to come play for us, you know, like, um, so, and I knew that like, I mean, throughout high school, I was, it was basketball first. I was like all basketball, all basketball all the time, my whole life until, you know, I, 
I remember walking off my the football field my senior year. We just lost in the playoffs. And I mean, I'm telling you, like I caught like one or two passes a game. Like that's that was it. And so a lot of blocking. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't even like you know, like we just yeah, we never our offense was was pretty old school and yeah, run ran the ball. Never had like a um, a real established passing game. So anyway, so I'm walking off the field and one of my coaches um, comes out and puts his arm around me and, you know, we're walking off the field together. And he says, you know what, Kevin, I don't think this should be your last uh, football game. And I was like, really? Like, no, like I'm ready to move on to basketball. Like it's, it's basketball season now. I've already switched my mindset. You know, I was, bu- I was right. bummed that we lost in the playoffs, but like we were kind of gearing up to win a state championship, hopefully in, in senior year of basketball. And, and ultimately we did. Um, but at, at that point, I, even at that point, I was not planning on playing college football. He was the first one to kind of put that bug into my ear. Okay. And okay. So I was like, well, you know, we can talk about it. Let's explore it. And, you know, I get through, um, basketball season and we win the state championship and I'm like, Oh no, like I'm, I'm playing college basketball. Okay. And, and but that coach kind of like that coach Enter- just kept like, Hey, like, I think you, I think you're a football player. <laughs> and so I was like, all right, well, let's, you know, let's see what's out there, if there's anything available. And yeah, at that point, it was really Western Oregon was one of the few schools left that would like, give me a look. You know, I didn't have a highlight film. I didn't send out anything to any college coaches. Um, and so, yeah, it was pretty late to the game in terms of like today, you know, where like everybody's got their huddle and I didn't <laughs> by, I didn't by your sophomore. By your sophomore year, you've already got a highlight reel. You already got oh, yeah. a, tra- a trainer. Oh yeah, yeah. And I mean, I didn't, I didn't sniff a varsity field or court until I was a junior. You know, so I think a lot of people think, and that's what I, you know, working with young kids today, I'm always like, you know, I use myself as an example a lot because some kids get discouraged. You know, they think they need to be playing varsity as a sophomore right. or, or a freshman, and it's like, guys, like it's, you don't have to, you don't have to be ready to go as a sophomore in high school. Like yeah, sure. take the time, Just be patient. Right. Yeah. Trust the process, keep working, keep your head down, keep your nose to the grindstone and you know, good things are going to happen. And so, um, so yeah, I just, I ended up, um, you know, kind of last minute going to Western because I knew also that I, I'd kind of talked to the um, college uh, to the basketball coach there. And he said, yeah, you know, I'm not going to give you a scholarship, but when you, when you get there, you know, come work out with us, come to open gyms and, you know, we'll see. And so I got there and, you know, um, my, my focus was football there because they, they were the ultimately the ones that gave me a scholarship. I mean, okay. at Western Oregon, it wasn't much of a, you know, we were, we were a division two school. And so there wasn't, there wasn't much money to go around. Like, I think my scholarship was a thousand dollars. Right. <laughs> wow. Um, and so, yeah, then in the off seasons, I started, you know, going to open gyms with the basketball team and, um, you know, sooner or later they gave me a spot and gave me a, a little scholarship as well. And awesome. Yeah. How, how so was, I, I wouldn't trade it for the world. And, and to, to answer your other, you know, part of the question there, like um, I do better when I am like, if I have too much free time and I, I think a lot of people can relate to this, like I'll screw off and like won't focus. So like I'm, I do way better when I am, um, you know, have a pretty set schedule. And I think, I mean, not to get into this right now, but like, I think a lot of guys in the NFL post playing now that they, they've been so used to a regiment and schedule and you have to be at, you know, here at this time and here at this time. And then all of a sudden we retire, we walk away from the game and we don't have that. And we're like, they don't know what to do with themselves. What are we, what are we doing now? You know? So, um, you know, that's something maybe we talk about down the road. I'm super passionate about that side and trying to help guys find their way and and find their purpose kind of post football. Right, right. right. Yeah, because I just could imagine that, you know, the, the time it takes, you know, um, you know, Spiro and I, Spiro knows my, my daughter accepted a scholarship to, to MSU to play field hockey for, uh, for Michigan State. Oh, and wow. like, and, and she's only, a, she's a senior now, she hasn't gone yet. But I can see the girls that she's getting friendly with, like every hour of every day is, is, is training, practicing, uh, uh, you know, recover, the recovery time. I couldn't even, and she could play lacrosse too. I couldn't even imagine playing big time division two or division one sports and have two because there's rare athletes that do it. I don't know how they do it. So I can, I understand that 
the, the um, you know, the, uh, the having th- something to do all the time works, but I think, right. It's got to be one of some mental aspects and the coach has got to be probably flexible too, I guess. I lost you, Kev. Oh, uh, can you hear me? Oh, there, there you go. go. There you there go. go. Yeah. I think, I, you know, I, I, I talked to my football coach. I wanted to get his blessing first before I went and played basketball in college. Sure. Um, and he was all for it. Like, again, I think maybe this is, was my Achilles heel in all levels, but like, I never really um, believed in myself. Like I, I would say like my, my confidence was, like I said, probably my, my Achilles heel, but it took him. He was the first one when I got to college to be like, you know, dude, like you can play in the NFL. And I think he saw that before I saw it. And so he saw basketball as an opportunity to help me get recruited and just to kind of, you know, it, it looks good. College scouts like that as a tight end that plays basketball. Yeah. And so yeah, you know, he was the one. Yeah, exactly. Tony Gonzalez, Antonio Gates. And so he, uh, he was like, yeah, I think you got to do that. Like I'm, I'm all for it, which was cool because there's a lot of, there's a lot of football coaches in college that would be like, no, like I'm going to take your scholarship if you, right. you know, try to go do that. Well, it kept you out of trouble too. Like you said, you know, he kept you yeah. playing sports the whole time. So you, you, you're focused, yeah. you're, you're, you're in your prime shape too, with all year yeah. round. So no, I didn't, well, so, have, yeah, I didn't have time so, to, to party and screw right. off. Well, I'm sure there's always time for that, but uh, yeah. <laughs> again, is an, which is another segue. So you get, you get drafted by the giants, right? And you're a kid from Oregon coming across yeah. the entire country to, you know, New York, the big Apple, like, is that like a, like a, yeah. Or is that like a, holy shit, <laughs> you know, we've talked yeah, to a look- bunch of guys that have all said like, you know, most of them were like, whoa, like I, I didn't even know where the facility was. Like, I think Dominic yeah. Hickson told me when the guy picked him up at the airport, he's like, I'm going to New York. And he's like, no, giant stadiums in East Rutherford, man. <laughs> yeah, totally. That's hilarious. Yeah. No, I mean, it was a little bit of both of like, you know, excited and like, but also, you know, like, holy shit, like you said, like, wh- what? Like, I'm going to right. New York City. Like, I mean, I grew up in a town, of a little tiny one stop, one, one, uh, one stoplight town with one high school, 5,000 people in our town. Everybody knows everybody. Uh, oh, yeah, exactly. And then I went to college, a town that was a similar size, like Western Oregon. Uh, we were in Monmouth, a, a tiny town in Oregon that was maybe even smaller than the town I grew up in. So, yeah, that was that was a huge adjustment for me. Uh, but I tell people all the time, like I feel so just fortunate and blessed that like New York was where I ended up because like I mean I could have ended up in like Cleveland or Pittsburgh or like somewhere that like you're not super <laughs> like now like I'm I'm you know I, I consider New York and, and New Jersey kind of a second home and like I've got you know friends for life there that. I'll always want to go see, uh, we won a Super Bowl there. So it, you know, it yeah, ties yeah. you to that town even more. So, um, you know, if, if, if you end up in Cleveland, it's like, you're not excited to go back to Cleveland, but right. like, I'm going back to New York this weekend for Eli's, um, yes. thing. Yes. And, like, yes. and I can't wait. Like, I'm like, I mean, my wife and I are just like dying to, to go, you know, we're going to get a hotel in the city and we're going right. to, we're going to live it up a little bit. And so, yeah, I think I, I think I'm just I, I tell people that all the time. Like I could have gone to 32 different cities and I ended up in like the best city in the world. So and you won there. So and when you, you went there, there. Yeah, which, which just makes it even more right, even more special. So we, we so I've got about five guys on my team that you know we have the nygiantsrush.com is the website and then the Giants guys is the podcast that we do each week. And every guy that we've interviewed, you know, and we've interviewed quite a few of your ex teammates and former Giants, and they all kind of say the same thing. They're like. I was worried when I got there, but like now it's like a second home or a, or a vacation yeah. destination. And we yeah, got, sure. got friends there. Like people, people really, even though it's intimidating out of the box, mm-hmm. it seems that, you know, once, especially as a player, when people are, you know, they're, they're kind of falling all over you guys and showing you around it yeah. kind of, it does kind of grow on you after a while. I know, yeah. it, I know it's fast, but for sure. I have to think yeah. it's a little intimidating, but I guess yeah. as a no, player, I mean, after a while, you're used to it all my closest friends from that team are still there, you know, like Sean O'Hara, Rich yep. Stoiberg, Stoiberg, Chris, yep. Kevin Booth, David Deal, Eli, like everyone's still there. You know what I mean? Right. And like, <laughs> I'm like one of the few guys that like moved back away. And, and, and that's just kind of more of my personality, you know, like 
I'm ready. You know, we just, we just bought a farm in Oregon. Like, so right. we're, we're, we're a little bit, we're not like New Jersey, New York lifers, but we love visiting, you know? <laughs> I love it. I love it, man. Hey, so speaking of coming to New York, you came in with a great draft class, right? Like you, yeah. I mean, it's, it's one of an all time, it's an all time draft yeah. class, you know, Steve Smith, Bradshaw, Ross. Um, yeah. So like, so I was always wondering your draft class, do you guys stick together like that? Do you guys still talk? Do you just talk to whoever yeah. was friends on your team? How's that work? Yeah. Um, no, the guys that I, that I communicate the most with are the guys that I just named, you know, like, right, right. Uh, the, that offensive line and I and Eli, we were all, our, you know, that was kind of our click, you know, right. our, our group that we hung out with. Our wives are all super tight. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's, there's certain guys like, I mean, um, I remember when we went back for the 10 year, you know, and like, um, I think it was the, they did like ringing the bell before the game. And they it was still, like, listen, they still ring that bell every game. <laughs> Do they? Okay. Yeah. But they asked, they asked our 07, our draft class to kind of be the ones to do it. And like, I remember like standing around that thing and all of us kind of being back together for the first time and being like, kind of looking around at each other, like, yeah, that was pretty cool. Like right. you just kind of took pride in being a part of that draft class. And I mean, you said it like there was from first round to seventh round, you know, even guys that you forget about like uh, Jay uh, Alford. Diossi, you know, Mike, Diossi, Mike, uh, Michael Johnson, forever. Michael Johnson, yeah, Adam Michael Johnson. Johnson. yeah, and, and then even like some of the undrafted guys, Craig Dahl, yep. uh, Mike, yep. Mike Matthews, who's one of my closest friends. You know, we we went Great through a lot the together. Right there. <laughs> yeah, just being, being rookie tight ends together, like we we became super close. So yeah, and you don't win the Super Bowl without that that class, man. Like uh, yeah, you guys yeah, all contributed. It, it's crazy. It it really was pretty unique awesome. to to have that many guys contributing like in, in the game too. You know what I mean? Like, no, that right, right, exactly. draft class was, yeah. was just stellar. I mean, when you think about all the draft class, it's honestly without kind of floating, you know, this out there, I mean, it's one of the best draft classes ever. I mean, you know, in the last, you know, from, from one to seven and the, and the to, yeah. UDFA guys. Yeah. I mean, you realistically yeah. don't win without yeah. that group. So that's something, yeah. something that definitely, you know, that's going to, you know, you can hang your hat on because that class yeah, really sure. changed the dynamic of the team. Yeah, no, it is something to be, take a lot of pride in for sure. Now, that's a great question, Spiro. Um, all right, so I've got a harder question. You, when yeah. you get to town, this is the one I've been waiting to ask you about, <laughs> right? So when you get to town, there's a four-time pro bowler who <laughs> you got to play behind, who's, yeah. and, and, and in New York, you either Quite the personality. Them, yeah, you, either, <laughs> you you either loved Shockey or you hated Shockey. The old school guys they hated Shockey with the long mm. hair and the craziness. Yeah. And if you were yeah. like in your like twenties or thirties, you were yeah. like, "This guy's the bomb." You like, this, yeah, totally. This guy's balls. So I could see that. Yeah. So like, there was definitely a riff, you know, between yeah. the, the the old school and yeah. the new school, you know, and 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 of course, you know. I'm sure it wasn't easy, but what's it like playing with Shockey? Were you guys friendly? Were you tight? Like, is there a Shockey story out there that would surprise people? Because we only think of Shockey as, like, one way. Like, just, you know, yeah. out of his mind, crazy, running with no helmet on, with hair yeah. flying. Like, what, what's what's that character? Yeah. Like? yeah. Um, you know, I think um, I, I remember, like, I was – I, I go there, you know, I've been a tight, I was a tight end since I was like in seventh grade, you know? So like, I was looking up to a guy like that, you know, he was, right. he was one of those guys that I was like, you know, trying to emulate my game as a high schooler. You know, I wasn't, I was <laughs> I was nowhere close to that style, you know, like, <laughs> but you know, he was a guy that you're like, this guy, this guy is awesome. You know, he like so, hard every, every down. Yeah. Just being younger. And, and so, I mean, I remember being like, almost like starstruck that I was going to go be his teammate, you know? And, um, but yeah, he was, I mean, we were, we were very different, you know, it's not like we were boys off the field, you yeah. know, but um, he, he looked out for me. And, um, you know, I remember a couple of times where like early on my first, I think the second game of the year, I, um, I was a healthy scratch. And I remember like, Jeremy like went out of his way like the next week in practice he kind of faked like a hamstring injury so <laughs> I could so I could be active 
You wow, know, what a guy. really? Yes, yeah, so I think like I mean I, I'll always remember that. Like that was cool. You know, like he he <laughs> you know he wow. noticed that I was kind of bummed that I I wasn't active the game before, and you know he was like ah oh, you know like just the next like the next practice he's like fakes a hamstring injury and so they were all like oh shoot like you know so that that automatically like you know they gotcha needed active. me to just in case so so good uh, dude <laughs> yeah that that was a that was a fun story and like which by the way is a fantastic story <laughs> um and then and then like you know what's the conversation like when he's not there the next year like i mean you know there's a four time pro bowl or next thing you know he's gone and you're the next man up like is next that something yeah, like, yeah how does that go down yeah, no, I mean, it's crazy. Like, I talk to people all the time. Like, I, I mean, I could have been a guy that, like, bounced around, you know, as a backup and never really made it. And, and I mean, that's just the NFL is, like, you never – you never obviously hope for a guy to get hurt, but, like, that's part of the game. And that's, you know, if, if – you know, you have to be ready and you have to have, like, make the most of that opportunity. And so, you know, if Jeremy never would have got hurt, like – you know, I, I might've never, you know, had the success that I did, you know? And so, um, it, it is an ugly part of the game, but like, yeah, I mean, when I got that opportunity and then, you know, tried to make the most of it and, you know, they believed in me enough that they thought that, you know, he was a little disgruntled for whatever reason, um, after we won the Super Bowl, and, um, he kind of, he wanted out and, like that's I think that gave me a lot of confidence that the team felt like they saw enough in me that they they could move forward without him and and that they thought I could you know fill his shoes there um but I you know a, a funny story quick story um I remember you know back then there wasn't Twitter or, or you know like I yeah, think no I had Instagram. a yeah I think I had a flip phone at the time and I remember better days yeah the better days <laughs> amen to that brother um <laughs> uh, <laughs> But I, I remember I'm, I'm getting into my wife had just taken me to Portland and it was August and I was flying back to I was flying back to uh, Albany for camp. And we had literally just pulled up to the parking lot. I'm like, I just kissed her and I'm getting out of the car and my phone. I get a text message and it's like a, a high school buddy. And he's like, hey, did you hear that Shockey just got traded? And I remember like, just gotta get the news. Like, <laughs> I what the hell like my wife like she said like I look like I saw a ghost or something <laughs> and and so like I was like very like just head spinning like what the hell like and I remember going up and yeah you know I I, I have to say goodbye and I, um you know I'll call you later when I get to my gate and um I remember I go up to like buy some food and one of the the workers there that was taking my order she looked at me and she goes honey, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> and so I must have just had the funny, like just the strangest look on my face of just like, you're like, what deep, the heck just happened? Thought. So yeah, many thoughts going happened. through your head. <laughs> my world just, and then yeah, I get to Albany the next day and like, you know, I pull up to camp to the dorms and my car. Oh, just that's gets right. You guys were still in swarmed. Albany back then. Yeah. Yeah. My wow. car just gets swarmed with reporters oh, yeah. and I'm just like, here we go. New T T E one, man. Right, T E one. Then, then the dumb <laughs> yeah. question is, and I'm sure it didn't happen, but I just kind of like, did you talk to him at all after that point or that was it? Um, no. Oh gosh. No, I, I didn't. Yeah, I don't think we I think we maybe exchanged a couple of text messages of like, you know, I, I think I probably text them and, you know, told them that I'll miss him and, and wish him good luck and stuff. Um, sure. But yeah, big shoes you know, to fill, right? Yeah, no, it was big, really big shoes to fill, you know, and, well, and I, yeah. I think he's a, a tremendous player. He, and and he's, listen, Eli Manning helps helps, the, uh, you know, ease that transition, right? You know, <laughs> oh, for sure. Uh, yeah. yeah. A pro ball quarterback, you know, a ho yeah. eventual Hall of Fame quarterback, you know, totally. and you guys, you're, you turned out to be friends, you have a good connection. Yeah. So like, yeah, you know, I'm sure that helped the whole process go a little smoother, right? Yeah, no, totally. I mean, I think, you know, naturally, like I wasn't the same, you know, I wasn't the same personality as, as Jeremy, like, right. I mean, I think it's probably a little bit easier on Eli. I was going to say, not, yeah, that probably worked to <laughs> his <bit>. advantage. <laughs> yeah, not to be, you know, a guy that's, you know, in their huddle, like, you know, tell throw him me to the give ball, him the, throw me the ball, throw me the throw ball. ball. You know, like <laughs> I don't think I probably told Eli to throw me the ball one time. You know, so <laughs> I just you know did my job and and uh, 
you know, you'd find me when I was open, but well, yeah, yeah, I think it probably, I think it was probably just a different personality maybe um, a little bit easier on, on Eli. Well, you saw him calm down too after that, you know, it, it, he kind of, he wasn't trying to force the ball to anybody. He was just letting things happen naturally. Find you yeah. over the seam for a nice long yeah. 45 yard game. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> yeah, man, no, totally. it's, it's, it's great. And, and, uh, and you're coming to town this week for the ceremony you'd said. Yeah, no, we're stoked, man. Yeah, we uh, Eli's having a little celebration Saturday night in the city, and then uh, Sunday we're coming to the game and awesome. Hoping, hoping we can uh, bring some good juju, man. Please, we need yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. but hey, I, I know I know another team that started zero and two and and fared pretty well. Hey, so. let's go. <laughs> yeah. Ding ding, yeah, no <laughs> doubt about it. And listen, they could use some some mojo right now. You know, like one. Seems like one thing goes well and then something else yeah. isn't going well. And so, yeah, that was, that was tough to watch. That was tough to watch that last, uh, Ugh. last Heart couple, a <laughs> couple plays there. Heartbreaker, right? Yeah. I saw a couple things floating around that looked like, um, he wasn't off sides really. Like no. he kind of no. looked like he moved they, on the ball. They, they zoom right in on, on Dexter Lawrence and he literally timed the Got ball perfectly. Yeah. And, just a and, perfect and, jump. And I'm sure, you know, uh, you know, you're familiar with, you know, OCU Manura. <laughs> he texted yeah. right out. He said, if, if Dexter Lawrence was offsides, I was offsides my entire <laughs> career. Oh, wow. Yeah. And then, totally. you no. know, you have a holding call down the field. How many times have you held a guy like that in the first quarter? Yeah. Just oh, block it down Take field. away the Jones touchdown? Yeah. It's yeah. just, they can't catch a break right now. <laughs> no, they can't. I, I hope, yeah, I hope uh, things get turned around here. They just need one W and they just right. start – Start stacking those W's. All right. I, I got to ask you this one because this is what, what made me start stalking you, and I apologize for doing that to you. But, <laughs> no. but something I saw, I mean, I got to know. I have to understand this story because I don't even know where I found it. But <laughs> next thing I know, I'm watching this YouTube video of some MTV show, okay? Yeah. You're on there with, with Soybert and Tolson and O'Hara yeah. and, yeah. and, um, and, and Gio. And yeah. you guys are getting like, I don't know, deal has got the suspenders being whacked off him. <laughs> O'Hara's getting tennis balls in the face. And you guys are screaming. And now I'm laughing my ass off at watching yeah. you guys laugh. And I'm oh thinking, my God. why have I not seen this before? Yeah. Like, where has this video been my whole life? So please <laughs> explain to me what kind of game show you're on and like how yeah. does that even come about? Because anytime I can see O'Hara getting it, get hit in the face with tennis balls while riding a bike. Oh sign me up it was it was the funniest i mean the show took us like six hours to film and it and we laughed hysterically for six oh, sure. hours straight. um but yeah the whole thing came about it was like the show was on mtv called silent library and i remember talking to my marketing agent and being like if you watch this show this show is hilarious like it, <laughs> it's it, like I, I die laughing every time and she and she was like do you want to see she said oh they filmed that in new york do you want me to see if i can get you on you and a couple of teammates on the show and You're i was like, like yeah of course. you were the ringleader <laughs> yeah and so i i kind of organized i invited a couple guys to, to oh, good. come and um yeah they they were excited to have us on and so I just invited, yeah, my closest friends on the team to to come join us. E Eli obviously did not deny the rep. <laughs> Spiro, have you seen it? Yeah, I do. I watched it when it happened. It was amazing. Amazing. I mean, yeah. you're watching, you know, they spin the wheel and they stop. Yeah. And these guys, it's silent library, so they can't see it. They're right. they how did you you telling me you kept 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 quiet for six hours without laughing at all or no, I mean we we were terrible. Like you you're supposed to, you know, you're supposed to win money if you like I can make it through each right. one without laughing. And we didn't we didn't make it through a single one without being too loud. Um but we because we were given the money to charity, like they they ended up gift cool. they gave us all the money anyways and we were able to give right. it to some of our charities. But um, so yeah, when you're when you're told you can't laugh, everything's a little bit funnier. You know, you felt like you were back in grade school. But um, <laughs> yeah, it was it was funny. The, the the best one was the end. Uh, I don't know if you saw that one where we all had to chug maple syrup. No, and, and they so it was kind of the opposite where only one guy was safe, and then the other five of us had to do the chug. the dare. And this story is funny because we. It was they decided to give us sugar-free maple syrup, and so it was like this six-man like oh. beer bomb that they had created, <laughs> and just were poured like gallons of maple syrup in there, and we just had to sit there and just 
chug sugar-free maple syrup and so you know i was trying to sandbag it because i'm like you know i'm the only guy that's like a little bit health conscious trying to you know be (laughs) be aware of what i'm eating the only one that won't eat anything (laughs) yeah and and, but you know we still had to complete the 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 challenge so oh yeah fast forward a couple hours later we go out to this fancy dinner in new york city because it was filmed in new york we got done with it we all went out to dinner sure and we all sit down and we're all we all kind of look at each other like Oh God, I don't feel good. And then for the next like hour and a half, I mean, I'm talking like dumb and dumber, explosive, like oh. running to the bathroom. Like we were like tackling each other on the way to the bathroom to get to the bathroom stall first. Like, oh, and we ended up goodness. having to leave. We ended up having to, to leave dinner early because we all just had explosive diarrhea. <laughs> oh my God. And like there it is. There's you. This is why you guys listen to the Giants, guys. You heard it here because, first. And, and you heard it here first. And I'll, <laughs> I'll go far as to say this, Kevin. So this is what we've gotten so far. We've gotten. Yep. We got Tollison told us that he punched Tom Brady in the balls, and he didn't get, <laughs> and he didn't get credit for a sack in the Super Bowl. R- oh Richie, my God. Richie Soybert tells us that him and Chris Snee are puking before every game, yep. except for except for Snee's puking on the field after the coin toss. And someone's yep. bringing a bucket out to him. Yeah. Chase oh, Blackburn yeah. tells us that he wants to be a head coach in the NFL because uh, he said, you know, special teams coach, you're in vogue right now. So he tells yeah. us that. Um, what do you call it? Uh, 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 Alex Bachman, who who he unfortunately got cut, but he was on the practice squad and up and down the last mm-hmm. three years. He said that his roommate was the bachelor. So when he got an opportunity <laughs> to play for the Giants, the guy who was the bachelor gave him his New York place to live. So oh, he no. took an Uber and a, and a train to work every day. So he didn't want to be oh late. So he had breakfast and dinner with Eli Manning every day. Must be nice. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty nice. Yeah. Because he didn't want to be late and he wanted to be the last one out of the building. So, yeah. so, uh, That's just, yeah, I mean, and then I and then I let you guys know that we all had explosive diarrhea. Beautiful, that's the yeah. best one yet. Best one yet. <laughs> yes, wait, thank you, sir. Wait, I wait till it. I hook you guys up with Bear Pasco. He's got he's got some good stories. Oh, I, I love it. So, we love it, baby. All right, so I have a bear. We well, Spirit. I think you know the story too. So one of uh one of the guys on the team, Jeff, um, who's off tonight, he um he sends this tweet out that says. Uh, I, I had given my, I think I'm going to get this story right. He had given his daughter a bear. So his, his daughter says, dad, what's the, the bear's name? He's like, it's bear. She's like, does the bear have a last name? And he's like, uh, Pascal. So, <laughs> so his daughter thinks that the, that the bear is named bear Pascal. So oh, that's, that's the hilarious. name of the bear. So uh, he tweets it out. We send it to him. He doesn't respond. I was like, come on, man. You got, like, that's a great bait right there. Yeah. yeah that's hilarious no yeah. I'll, I'll definitely i'll definitely uh tell him he's got to get on the show with you guys he's, yeah he's, well we, we'd love to have him because we don't we don't ask a ton of hard questions we have some fun the people really like it um yeah no i love it he, the he game show, the game show, i'm telling you i saw the suspenders and i saw yeah i mean o'hara's riding the bike with a with a mask on getting wailed in the face and i'm like yeah I'm like, I'm like, did Kevin Voss pay so these guys to go? Because they're the ones getting beat up. <laughs> He's not getting anything. I got my ear, che- I got my ear chewed on by an old man. Like that was. What? what you- did you see them? <laughs> yeah, dude. Oh. It was crazy. Yeah, you gotta watch that, this whole I'll- thing, man. Yeah, Wait. you gotta watch the whole episode. It's it's hilarious. Fantastic. I was the first. I was the first one to go, and this old man walks in, takes his dentures out, and I'm thinking like this. You oh. know, these are actors. Like they're gonna kind of just half-ass it. But this guy just went to town, just <laughs> non, non on my ear, just all right. Full That's such a like, great concept. All right, so the name it's of the show is what again? Silent, Silent Li- Library. Silent. Okay, people. Tomorrow when we drop it. the podcast, go to YouTube, look up Silent Library, the Giants yeah. edition. You'll see yeah. Deal and Soybert and Kevin and Tolson and O'Hara young, on there. Young kids don't know about it. Yeah, you got you no. to see it. Yeah, no, <laughs> having it's, fun. It, it resurfaces. It somehow resurfaces, kind of like the NFL fantasy uh, yes. files commercials. They resurface like once a year. You know, <laughs> it's beautiful. People wow. get a good laugh, and I'm I'm always happy to to to, to be kind of <laughs> the one being laughed at. It's it's funny. So what's the what's the agenda? For, like, are you, are they going to bring you guys down on the field for for the uh, for the ceremony? I think so. Yeah. Um, I think that I don't know how many guys are are going to be there, but. Um, 
you know, I know like Brandon Jacobs is going to be there. Obviously all those local guys are going to be there. I've been really just communicating with, with all those guys. Um, yeah, you know, we're going to all hang out a couple times. So, but yeah, I think we're going to be, um, just on the field. Um, right. I'm doing, right. I just talked to somebody, um, over in the front office today that is going to help is ask me if I do a little autograph signing. So if anybody's in town, uh, awesome. I think oh. it's like 1130 to 1230 before kickoff, um, somewhere, at the stadium? Stadium. somewhere, yeah, somewhere at the stadium. Um, I can't, I can't remember where like a, a bank is putting it on or some first interstate bank, maybe. Okay. Nice. Uh, if you're going to be at the stadium, they, they, right. Okay. So people, to, if you're going to the game this weekend, Kevin's going to be signing autographs. If it's at the stadium where they usually have it is right in front of, I think the Pepsi gate. And then, yeah. And, yeah, yeah so there's so. like Astro turf right there. Mm -hmm. And that's where yeah. they do the post game show. So it's probably right in there. Um, yeah. and, and, um, you know, since I'm a season ticket holder, Spiro's going to the game. Oh, nice. And of course, um, Jeff and, uh, uh, who, who's the gentleman I told you with the bear Pasco, we'll all yeah. be there. We'll try to stop by and say, yeah, hello. please do. I'd, I'd love to see you guys. That'd be fun. Absolutely, man. All right, Spiro, I know you got one for me. Yeah. It, well, sorry. I, I, I've always, you know, we always go back to 2007, you know, we fans don't realize how hard it is to win a Super Bowl at, for year to year. You go out, yeah. you win one year, 2007, right off the bat. And then, yeah. you know, you don't get back to it. So like, how do, how do you, how do you feel about that? So it's like, yeah, like yeah. I, I, I'm lucky to win one, or it's like, damn, I never got back to to winning one. Yeah. Like, how how how's yeah. that your emotions feeling after that? Well, <laughs> uh, you know, I'll be I'll be perfectly honest. Like, it was it was really challenging to uh, leave in free agency and yeah. then miss that second one. Like that 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 beat me up. Like that one, I'll probably yeah. never like truly get over. Um, wow. You know, okay. and and Freaking you feel reach, self. Man. <laughs> you feel selfish, you know, you feel selfish no. for saying that because like, no. here I am, I, I won one, you know, my rookie year and a lot of guys go their whole career, but it was, it was really hard, you know, to, to sit there and like watch them, like your, your part of you is rooting for a bunch of friends and stuff. And there's also sure. a part of you that's like, you know, just like, damn it. I was just there. I could have, I could have <laughs> been a part of this team, you know? So that was that was really really hard. Like it, it it beat me up pretty good, and um, like I said, probably something that I'll <clears throat> that I'll probably never really truly like get over. You know, yeah, because sure. I'll, I'll I'll fall. I'll always cool. have like you just know how special. Like once you taste that, and once you know, and again, like in a city like New York, you know how special that is, and so it's like man, I was, I was that close to winning a second yep. one. Like, are you kidding me? We, we um, had, uh... So that. We had Jake Ballard on, and and we got oh, pretty yeah. friendly. With, we got pretty friendly with Jake. He come sometimes he pops on the show on the live stream, and and yeah. and he told us a similar story. We call it "You Got Jerried," because <laughs> yeah. you know, like like he was fully expecting to come back to the Giants himself, and he yeah. was saying that people were right. Spirit, do I have the story right? Yeah, that people were coming up to him and they were like, "Hey, did you tell him? Did you tell him?" And he's like, "Did you tell me what? Like like." Yeah. Like they just, you know, it's you know, tough business, man. It's tough yeah, business. Yeah, like, because you know, he they were gonna stuff him on waivers, like nobody was gonna pick him up. Yeah, you know, yeah, so that was that I whole think, story was they did him dirty too, man. Like that was, <laughs> right. that was really, that was really bad. I mean, and it was ultimately like the Patriots that like <laughs> yeah. really screwed up the whole thing. And it was right. it was probably Belichick going like, yeah, well, I'm I'm gonna stick this to you guys. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. And, and and Ballard beat him in in New England you know, that year yeah. with, with that great yeah. touchdown catch. So I'm sure For Belichick sure. was, was probably, you know, take saying, yeah. take, take this. Totally. And, and I mean, like going back to like what I said previously, like Jeremy gets hurt. I get my opportunity, right. you know, like I, Jake's a good friend of mine and, and, you know, I loved watching him have success and like, you know, me leaving gave him an opportunity to, you know, be, a, you know, forever be a part of, you know that franchise history and winning a Super Bowl as well. So I'm, you know, I, I try to look at it the bright side. I know, um, and I don't, and I, and I appreciate. We missed you, bro. Way, we I mean, missed you, you over here too. But, yeah, I appreciate but, it. But, but Spiro, he had, he had four. Like, uh, I mean, uh, 2010, 2008 through 2010. You know, he's putting up like, like almost Pro Bowl numbers. Like Solid. he's ready to break out. Like. Like that 2011 year was going to be his year. Like you were like, mm -hmm. you know, 400, 500, 600 yards, you yeah. know, you're, you're pulling down, the, you know, three, four, five, six touchdowns. Like, yeah. I don't even understand it. Like, I mean, like, honestly, I'm like, you said, like, 
you know, you had no desire to go. At least that's kind of what I'm yeah. feeling. No, I didn't. I, I was, <laughs> I, I told the giant, you know, I told Jerry Reese that I would take less to stay. And, um, and ultimately I was, I was doing my darndest to, to stay there. I mean, you know, long story short, it was ultimately like, you know, I'm, I'm standing in line to get on the, the plane to go to Oakland. And I'm staring at my phone, looking at my phone, just being like, just call, just call, right. please just call, just call. Like, and I, cause you know, they, we had told New York that this was a, what Oakland's offer was. It was significantly right. more than theirs. And, um, you know, so they just, they ultimately, we told them like, Hey, give us your best offer. Like, we'll take it. It doesn't need to even come close to Oakland's, but Kevin right. like wants to stay there. You know, that's kind of amazing. So I'm, I'm literally standing in line to get on the airplane to go to Oakland and kind of close that chapter and just waiting for somebody to call, waiting for Jerry Reese just to be like, Man. okay, here's the offer. But they, they, he kind of, you know, it's a business and he played hardball. He, he, he was kind of waiting for me to crack, you know, and be like, mm -hmm. okay, I'll take, I'll take what you gave me, you know? So we were right. kind of like, played this Russian roulette game of like he wasn't gonna he wasn't gonna call me and, and he's kind of was like this is this is the offer and and ultimately like I get it you know like I had a number of concussions you know and New York was like one of the few teams that truly knew my concussion history right you know um and I think I think that scared them and, and I get it like I, it was it is a profession it is uh, a business that <laughs> they saw wow like this guy's concussions are adding up and I think that was ultimately what played a, a significant role in, in the decision to, to move on. At least you got a couple bucks out of it though, right? <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, yeah, it helps. <laughs> yeah. I, I signed, I signed, uh, you know, <laughs> compared to what the guys are, are making now, it was, yeah, it, was well. it was peanuts, but it was, <laughs> it was still, you know, there was some good guaranteed money in it. And yeah, I mean, we're a fifth first, round pick man. Like, yeah, you did well for yourself. You did for well sure. for sure. I mean, we're talking first world problems here, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, so I know you don't want to hang out with us. My, my last question for you is like, like, because we were chatting a little bit on the text about the, about the game and the heartbreaker. How, how, you know, one, you got four kids. Two, mm -hmm. you know, you got a business to run, right? And you're, you know, you're on the West Coast. You're tucked up there in the, in the Northwest. Um, yeah. You know, how often do you follow the actual football side of it? Like, like the games, mm -hmm. the you know, who's, who's doing well, who's doing what. And if you are yeah. like any thoughts in, at all, or do you guys not usually, you know, comment on your old yeah. teams? No, I mean, I don't get to watch as much as I, I wish I could, you know, like I, I would love to be able to kick back and watch the, the whole, the whole game in entirety. But like, like I said, when I was texting you, like I caught like the last half of the fourth quarter is all I got to okay. see of that game. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, we got you know Sundays are, are family day with four kids, and so we're we're running around and Don't you defense. know, thankfully my yeah, <laughs> thankfully thankfully my boys are getting into football. You know, they're old enough nice. now, especially my nine year old. Like he's a diehard. The only the only unfortunate thing is that he's like a diehard Chiefs fan. Um, <laughs> Wait, which, bro, how does that happen? I know Patrick Mahomes, man. Come on, I'm working. <laughs> I'm working on him. It, it, does like, he, the Giants got to help me. You play yeah. for the Giants. Yeah, and the Giants got to help Giants me out a little the, bit, though, right. because they haven't been good his whole entire life, you know? And so <laughs> That's true. It's true. They, Poor kid. once they, you know, and a kid like that, like, they're bandwagon fans, you know? Mm -hmm. Kids are like, yeah. oh, like, but he was also, like, to his defense, he was born in Kansas City. I was playing for the oh, okay. Chiefs when he was true. born. Okay. And so, you know, he, he really, like, it just, it was a perfect storm for, like, the Chiefs to be good. <laughs> He really clung on to Patrick Mahomes and he was Makes born sense. there and they're really good. And so I think once the Giants start doing well, he'll he'll hop on that bandwagon a little bit more. <laughs> so is he is the nine you said nine years old? Yeah. Is he he's the oldest? Yeah. Okay. So do the younger ones know you played for the Giants or they're not there yet? Yeah, no, my my seven year old, he his favorite team is the Giants. So he's you got know, one. it's like you got that. One. <laughs> you've experienced it where like they kind of like as the older they get, they kind of want to go the opposite of dad, you know? So like, oh, yeah. I've been trying to push the giants on him his whole life, you know? And he's just like, no, I'm a Chiefs fan. Whereas like my seven year old is not quite old enough. And maybe he's, he's just a little, he's, yeah. he's just like, wants to please dad still. So he's like, yeah, yeah I'm a giant, you know? So, so, 
So if you slap an Eli jersey on him or a Jones jersey, he's wearing it no problem. Yeah, for sure. You know, like they they all have like you know my jersey. I think they've got they have an Odell jersey because um, that was you know that was easy to be a fan of him when he of was course. around. And, um, they've got Eli jerseys. Um, so yeah, they they all still even my daughter my my five year old daughter still rocks her uh 89 jersey which is cute it. <laughs> well yeah I, I always said like uh you know the daddy's little girl always wants to do what daddy's doing so like yeah for daddy sure says it's cool it's still cool totally yeah and she i mean she she's i would say she's probably the biggest fan because we talk about like favorite players yeah and you know she'll name all giants players and, <laughs> nice. and i'm and i'm her very favorite you know like, whereas like the boys are like yeah, you know, my oldest is like Patrick Mahomes. You know, you're down on their Kelsey, list. You're down on their list. Yeah. Tyreek Hill, and yeah. they don't even like. I'm not even in their top five. You know, whereas my daughter, my daughter is like, she's she. For some reason, she calls me Daddy Boss, but she refers to me as a football player. <laughs> oh my god, that's a scream. That's great. <laughs> yeah, that's so she's great. like Daddy Boss, Eli Manning. You know. <laughs> yeah, Daddy <laughs> Boss again. Fun. Yeah, that's exactly. That's awesome. Are you bringing them this weekend, or are they staying home? No, staying home. Just, Leave just home. my wife and I. It's <laughs> yeah. We need, we need a break, man. We homeschool, and it's like, it's, oh man, more power to you guys. Wait, you it's, homeschool all four of them? Yeah. Well, our our Ooh. youngest is not in school. Um, she just, she just, she just hangs out. Yeah, you know, she just hangs out and tries. <laughs> we just hope that she doesn't, you know, hurt herself while we're trying to <laughs> wrangle the other three. Cause that's a but that's a lot of work. That's a lot. Of it's work. no joke. I I my wife. Um, I just, my, you know, I, I own a gym in town here and she more so for her to kind of have a break, but I just hired her to kind of work our front desk on Mondays. And so she's there all day from 5 45 AM to like 6 45 at night. Dang. And so I take, I'm homeschooled dad on Mondays. Okay. <laughs> and I got so much damn respect for <laughs> stay at home moms. It's it, like, intense, it, dude. <laughs> it, yeah. My, my wife's at a teacher, the end of the so day, I know what you're talking about. At the end of the day, I am so exhausted. It is it's like the hardest day of the week by far. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, dude, what, shout out what you're doing over there too, uh, Boss Sports Performance. What, what, what's that all? About? Oh yeah, yeah. Appreciate it. No, I'm. Uh, yeah, we've owned a, a gym there. It's uh, I've had it for about eight years now. Awesome. Um, and yeah, I, I tell people all the time, it's like football was great, and and I love that experience. But like, I I really feel like what I'm doing now is is like my true calling right um and football just kind of gave me a platform to do it on a bigger scale and, and to reach just to be able to reach more people with what we're awesome. doing so yeah it's you know we're a sports performance facility where you know our main clientele is is the everyday athlete youth athlete you know we work with high school kids through we have a ha handful of professional athletes okay. um that we work with uh, a couple of guys in the nfl uh jacob hollister tight end for yes. now the, the jacksonville jaguars his twin brother cody hollister who's with the titans um nate sudfeld uh quarterback for the niners now you, you can um, so like, yeah we work with you could be like the spot for tight ends <laughs> yeah no i mean it is fun we work with a couple of combine guys getting ready for their combine and pro day and, and do some of that um you know we we have a uh an mlb niche too that we, we work with nice. a handful of okay. guys so yeah it's 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 a lot of fun man i love it it's you know we work with kids my nine-year-old you know, we got nine-year-olds too coming in the gym oh, so cool. kind cool. of all over the board adult fitness like um, spe uh, speed training and uh yeah yep. oh, box yeah, jump in the whole thing we do, we have some teams now too. We don't have like a, a seven on seven football team, but we have like a, a, ba a couple of baseball teams. We have a couple of, uh, okay. we do boss baseball, boss basketball, uh, some AAU basketball teams. So yeah. Hey, one of those we, shirts, man. Those are fresh. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll have to, I'll have to get you guys one of those <laughs> yes. for sure. Yeah. yeah I saw, love, so he, it, we got our schedules, you know, me, uh, mixed up the last two weeks. He's like, oh, I'm real, so yeah. sorry. He's like, I'll send you out one of those t-shirts. And I, you know, yeah. I can see on the picture. I was like, oh, yeah, I'll take one of those. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. This, this is actually, you mentioned, but this is what I wanted to send out to you guys. So, yeah, uh, I'm going I'm to I'm I'm get those it. to you guys for XL, sure. XL, no big deal. <laughs> okay, perfect. What about well, you, listen, Craig? One, we wouldn't. We Thanks for hanging out with us. Um, we don't ask too many hard questions. We have some fun. We hope to have you back if you'll be willing to no, come I'd, back. I'd love um, to. No, I, I had a blast. I'll have me on anytime. Yeah, in fact, what we're going to try to do is I'm going to try to, if I can pull off Pascal, if he'll yeah. if he'll come on, we were talking about doing you, Jake, and Bear 
all together on the same show. Big tight end room. Let's fine. go. And then, and then we can, yeah, we can ask each one of you the same question and see who tells the truth. <laughs> you know, you know who you might need to throw into that mix too is Travis Beckham. Yes. Oh, that's let's go. Right. Let's get all the tight ends in. Re- yeah. We, we, yeah. We, that, we, we, that was it? because the four of us, the four of us were all there together. You okay. know, that was kind of like the post nice. shocky Mike Matthews, Darcy right. Johnson. And then it was kind of myself, Bear, Beckham, Ballard. Um, so, yeah, we, we still we have a text chain with the four of us. So we all still kind of love it. Uh, communicate every once in a while. And, and every one of those tight ends got Jerry Reese. Every one of them. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> he who we don't speak of. Yes, yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we don't, we don't usually we don't usually speak of them anymore because we're like because because if you think about what they had was you know that two thousand you know uh, uh, nine ten eleven years those teams could have won like and yeah. then of course Plax shoots himself you know what I mean but yeah. but if you think about it like that window was such a great window there was more there was more NFC championships. Super Bowls to go to, but he broke them all up. You know, yeah. like he he had he got this different mind frame what he wanted. He broke up some of the really important pieces that you know not everybody's a superstar. You know what I mean? Like yeah. not everybody's Michael Strahan. You know, not everybody's you know um, yeah. Hakeem Nix. You know, or whatever. Yeah. Like, but th- they had a really good chemistry on those teams, and and they yeah. really got Reese and broke it up. Spear, how many times have we heard guys come on and go, yeah, like Reese just. Just about on. everybody, and just about everybody, man. It, yeah, it, it, it's true. We wish we wish it ended better, but listen, we had good times when you were here. That's all no that matters, man. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I, I appreciate it, guys. I yeah, like I said, I always feel like New York is a second home, so I'm right, always. So then, what's what's the autograph time? Uh, so this Sunday for Eli, if you're going to Eli Manning's retirement uh, jersey, yep. I've already said I'm calling it now, Kev. Just so you know, when Phil Sims retired, when they retired Phil Sims's jersey, okay. At halftime, Phil came out, did his speech, and he said he wanted to throw one more pass at Giant mm-hmm. Stadium. He called Lawrence Taylor down after having a couple beers, okay? And Lawrence Taylor <laughs> runs a pattern, and Phil goes, he starts patting the ball and tells LT to go long. No. LT's freaking out. <laughs> LT's got loaf- loafers on, a T-shirt, and a jacket. LT does like a 30, 40-yard pass, and Sims hits him in stride for the last touchdown. No. I'm calling it here that Strahan, who's getting his jersey retired in a couple of weeks, or yeah. or Tumor, or 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 Vic, one of those three are gonna come out for the, yeah. for the pass. If it happens, you'd be like, "Yo, this guy Santucci called that on the podcast." <laughs> yeah. That would be pretty sweet. Yeah. All right. What time? Remember. What time is the autograph? Eleven thirty. I, I think eleven thirty to twelve thirty. All right, people. Eleven thirty to twelve thirty at MetLife. I think it's gonna be. I could be wrong. But I think yeah. it's the, Pep- the Pepsi gate where they do the pregame show. Look for Kevin. He's going to do an autograph side and come down, say hello, say, hey, I watch you on the Giants, guys. And Kevin, um, bring us a win. Come on. Us yeah, win. for sure, yeah. man. Bring us All a right, win. Let's go. We, we got to get this one. No All right, go. Kevin. Uh, thanks for hanging out with us. I promise we'll get back. Just tell that bear Pascal what we want him, and, and yep. uh, we, let's make that happen, too. Okay. Appreciate you guys right. having me on. I had a good time. Yeah. Thanks, oh, Kevin. Anytime, Let's Kevin. Thanks. All right. See you guys. Have a weekend.